Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is category theory. Today I would like to tell you a little bit more about universal properties. So I try to give the abstract definition, which is kind of more complicated than the intuitive one. So it will look a little bit strange. Bear with me. I try to explain it as carefully as I can. Um, kind of a problem that arises quite quite often if you write, try to write down mathematics, something that is intuitively clear might end up having a kind of little bit of a strange definition. But we will get used to it. It's not so bad in the end. So I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't um, be too negative here. It's not so bad. So let's have a look and I'll try to motivate it along uh, the product or along tuples, which is of course kind of this product in a sense. So we have tuples. Um, well, let's, let's say you have two very easy sets, uh, A and uh, 0 and 1, and you take tuples, which are look a little bit, well, it's, a, it's very simple, of course, but anyway, it's a, a running example here. And so tuples have two components. Um, so here I have two tuples, 0, comma, A and 1, comma, A, of course. And kind of the point is about having tuples. Well, they have two components. So everything is determined by kind of knowing the first entry and the second entry. So here I just have A, but you can imagine that you can have, have B as well, whatever, then you would have four objects here. Uh, so zero comma B and one comma B, for example. And whenever you know the first entry and you know the second entry, of course you could identify the two points. This is pretty obvious, kind of this is how they are defined. And maybe you shouldn't say obvious, but this is how they are defined. So as soon as I know that the first entry is zero, I check that and I know the second entry is B. I check that that I know that the tuple has to be 0, comma B. So I kind of, I don't need to know the whole tuple. In some sense, I only need to know its components or should be more precise. It's equivalent to know the components than knowing the tuple. It sounds very innocent, but it's kind of the starting, really the main starting observation for universal type of objects, at least in this sense. So tuples have two independent components. And my question is, what on earth does this imply? So let's actually have a look. What does this mean uh, in the sense of category theory, so in the sense of arrows? So the point is kind of this diagram, which you all hopefully have seen by now. So this is the universal type of diagram for products. Um, so there exists uniquely a map which factors uh, into or which goes into the product if you know what happens on the two sides. So let's have a look here. So I had, I've written down two explicit uh, examples here, or it's actually one explicit example and two calculations or two uh, kind of lines of notations for this example. So I have the set X, which is just the set 0, 1, 2, kind of the, the easiest non-trivial set that I haven't used yet. So I have one element set that I call A, I have a two element set that I call 0 and 1, and now I have a three element set that I just call 0, 1, and 2. I could have called it apple, a peach, and banana or whatever, um, but you will get the point anyway. And let's say you have a map F1 uh, and F2. And these maps are kind of, kind of you, you, it's what you, what you know in the two entries of the tuple. So I just picked the, down two of them. Doesn't really matter. So the first map sends 0 to 0, 1 to 1, and 2 to 1. And as soon as you know that, as soon as you know what happens to your two entries, the left entry, that's F1, and this is left, and the right entry, this is F2, this is right. Um, as soon as you know that, uh, you're good to go. There exists a unique map that goes to the product. That's kind of the point of the product as having two independent components. The product has two independent components. So there exists a unique map, which I just have written down. You can, you can work it out if you want. Um, such as a buff diagram commutes, which is just uh, the category theory way of saying that the product is determined by both of its components. So as soon as you have something that you know on component one and you know on component two, there's unique thing, uniqueness, unique thing you can you can basically construct or that exists for um, the product itself. And that's this universal type of property, which you can then abuse in the following way to show that the product is uh, well kind of universal in a certain sense, and it's unique up to unique isomorphism. A pretty cute argument that always works in the same way. Um, so let's have a look at the argument and let's stay uh, on this slide for a while. So I'm kind of want to say that x1, wh wherever, wherever we are, let's say we are in sets, x1 cross x2, which is a stupid construction, is unique. Okay, so how does it work? 
well, assume, well, how can you show uniqueness? Always the same argument. Assume you have something satisfying exactly the same properties, and I will call it Z, or I call it Z on the slide. Okay, so I have Z that satisfies exactly the same properties. What are those uniqueness properties? Well, I, I haven't even labeled the edges, but you have two maps that go into the components, and then they exist uniquely in element F. So it exists uniquely F. Very good. So that's a universal property for this guy. But you can also use, you're assuming that Z also satisfies the universal property. So you can also assume uh, that Z satisfies, well, the X goes into Z. And by the same type of construction, there will exist a unique G making the co corresponding diagram commute. Right, so um, kind of the universal type uh, of construction here. And you get a unique F and you get a unique G. There exists uniquely F and uniquely G. You get this one here, as I said, from the product from X cross Y, so you know the property for this one. And you get this one from the universal property for Z. And point is right now, I don't have actually used uh, something about the product specifically, but more about this idea of having something that exists uniquely associated to a certain type of situation. Keep that in mind because this will kind of, kind of be the upshot for all universal constructions. Anyway, you can also play the following funny game. It's kind of a beautiful observation. Of course, you can also uh, have Z and Z, Z and Z itself, or X cross Y and X cross Y itself uh, going to the various components. And there should exist the unique map making this diagram commute. And of course, the unique map is the identity. If you write it down, maybe I shouldn't say of course, but if you write it down, it's pretty obvious that this unique map will be the identity on Z. Okay, so we have another map, the identity on Z, which goes all the way to here. So we have constructed this map using uh, x cross y and uh, x x one cross x two and z, uh, and we have used this uh, constructed this map using the opposite z and x one cross x uh, x two, and you have constructed the outside map using z and z, um, and you of course have a dual diagram as well. So we also have the identity on uh, x one cross x two dually. And by commutativity, you will see actually that FFG is uh, the identity on Z. Okay, um, in one way or the other, it's related to the identity on Z here. Uh, so FG is the identity on Z, and which means F and G are of course inverses to one another because you also have the, the, the different one, which I haven't written down. So this would be the identity on uh, X1 cross X2. Um, and this means they're inverses and they exist uniquely. So by this, what I call, this is kind of, by the way, uh, something that I call the glue, glue universal diagrams together trick. So you use the universal diagram for one, you use the universal diagram for the other, you glue them together and you get two maps and you also get the identity map. And it follows that F and G, because they are determined uniquely, are now unique isomorphisms between, uh, in this case, Z and X cross Y which says that kind of the X cross Y construction is very, very, very unique. It's unique up to unique isomorphism. And yeah, so the only thing I have used here is actually the universal type of property of the product. I just motivated along the product because you can now track down everything explicitly using kind of coordinates, right? First coordinate, second coordinate. But there's nothing really special about coordinates here, just the motivation to get started. And this is now how it looks like. So universal type of uh, object and it takes a while to digest it, but um, it looks like this universal morphism. So you have a factor C to D and you have an object in D, you call it X. And a universal morphism from X to F, or there's one from F to uh, X, which is kind of the dual one anyway, is this thing that makes this unique, the exists unique, the unique H that makes this diagram um, commute. So this is how it looks like. I show an explicit example on the next slide. But it's better really to just pause the video or to look up the slides or to look at one of the links in the description. And this is just the abstract definition of a universal property. You do it with a functor and an object. And the universal property is satisfied by a pair of an A. And this is the A prime, the one uh, where, where it maps to or where it maps from. Depends a little bit what you want to do. Um, and you can kind of make it work like this. So the universal type of uh, object is A plus this map here, U from X to F of A, or the other way around. Depends a little bit what you want. 
And just keep in mind that these might not exist, but if they exist, you can always play the pacing things together trick. And you see that they're unique up to unique isomorphism, which in the end justifies why they are so important. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the definition again. So a universal morphism from X to F, let's stay with the first one. A universal morphism from X to F is a pair of an A here and this map U such that it exists uniquely this H making this diagram here compute. So there exists uniquely an H for each A prime. And of course you can just apply F and you get this uh, uniquely associated diagram down here. So if you want to know how that works for products, so let's do it for products. Uh, what you need to do is to make it work. As I said, it's a little bit, usually a little bit cumbersome to make an obvious definition uh, rigorous um, is, is as follows. So the factor here is uh, the, the kind of the co-product factor, let's say from set to set cross set. So this is set, was supposed to be set, set cross set. And um, it, it really just is then the product in the sense is a universal object from X, Y, which was uh, well, the kind of the product should be X cross Y in this case, to the functor, to the diagonal functor um, delta. And the, the way to remember this is kind of the indexing category is D, which is a bit of a complicated, and the C is a category of interest, meaning in this setup here, C is the category where everything should happen, and D is the indexing category. Anyway, um, so the point is um, that un universal type of diagrams, you can make that explicit. It's a pair of an object and a morphism satisfying universal type of uh, construction, depending on a functor and another object. This is how it works. Um, for example, the product is the one given for the diagonal functor. This is a bit more complicated than you think it would be, but as I said, sometimes it's just hard to write down kind of obvious mathematics uh, in, in, in kind of in a rigorous definition. Um, it's not so important to really remember how it works. You only need to remember that it is possible to explicitly or to, uh, to really nail down the definition of what the universal type of property is. Um, but in practice, it's just good to keep in mind that for universal type of properties, you have some universal diagram. This is defined by the indexing category D and the functor F from before. And um, you can always paste them together and they're unique up to unique isomorphism. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.